Welcome back to Special Relativity A20. After discussing energy and momentum um, and examples with collisions, we now want to talk about forces. And um, we get back to the example of Alice traveling to the center of the galaxy and asking what does it mean in terms of acceleration. So when we start from Newton's second law, we know that a force is a change in momentum. We can write this down as d, 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 d t uh, m not over uh, times u over square root one minus u square over c square, or just with a gamma factor. And the thing to consider here is that now the gamma factor and the velocity are actually time dependent. So there's two components to this. We'll come back to this. The kinetic energy um, is the work done by an external force, and you can get to the kinetic energy by just integrating, let's say, from a particle which is accelerated by an external force from a velocity zero to some velocity v. That's the integral um, over, this, the, over the path of the particle, over the path of this object times the force. If you just assume here uniform um, motion in x direction, then this simplifies to just an f dx. Okay, so as a first activity, I want you to find the kinetic energy of an object with velocity v and the mass and mass m naught. And as a second part, I want you to test this result um, for velocities much, much smaller than the speed of light, where you're used to doing this kind of calculation and you're familiar with, with the outcome. So we just have to integrate, just have to integrate. So this is a little bit involved here. Uh, so we have to integrate from zero to v, m naught, that's our constant, you can take that out, d dt of this u, um, u times gamma dx. Okay, so you find those two components here. Um, and then we do a trick where, you know, we introduce this du dx dx, um, and then the integral becomes an m times u du over one minus u square over c square third uh, to the third, to this third power half. Okay, and then you can just look up the integral or work it out. Not that difficult actually, but you find that this is equal to m naught times c square over square root one minus u square over c square, which you have to evaluate for velocities v and zero. And when you do that, you find those two components here. Okay, the first one is m naught c square times gamma, and the second one is m naught c square. So that result is actually not too surprising as we saw that we can write the energy equal to m naught c square plus k. And what we just calculated here from this example is k is equal to energy minus m naught c square. Okay, so that result already makes sense in with respect to the discussion we had to this point. Okay, or you can simplify this by saying the kinetic energy is gamma minus one times m naught c square. Okay, so if we now evaluate this for small values of, of v, uh, as we did before, we find that the kinetic energy is one half m naught v square. And I find it interesting illustrated to plot what this means now. So if you plot the kinetic energy of a particle as a function of its velocity, you find that you know, at, for small values, those two curves, you know, basically overlap. For small values, m naught c squared is times gamma minus one is basically the same as one half m v square, which is just derived here from the Taylor expansion. Um, but for larger values, this diverges, and especially when you get closer to the speed of light. Um, you know, just to get a quantitative example, I ask you to do another calculation here. I want you to reinvestigate Alice's journey to the center of the galaxy, where she has a spacecraft which moves with a gamma factor of 15,000, an acceleration of 10 meters per second square, and the mass of the spacecraft, let's say, is 10,000 metric tons or 10,000, uh, sorry, 100 metric tons or 100,000 kilograms. So compare the kinetic energy using Newtonian mechanics or special relativity. And you find that the difference is astonishingly large. So if you just work this out, one half m uh, c square, we can just use c square here because the velocity is basically c. Um, 
five times 10 to the 22 kilograms meter square over second, second square. And in relativistic terms, the answer is 30,000 times larger. So 30,000 times larger than the classical case. So the huge difference between the classical evaluation and the evaluation into special relativity. One more uh, word on M uh, F equal MA. Uh, the question is how does this transform on a Lorentz transformation is something we, we already halfway figured out. So here you basically want to see how A uh, transforms on the Lorentz transformation. We have started the discussion by saying, you know, in Galilean transformation, the acceleration is invariant, while in Lorentz transformation, that's not the case. But if you investigate again the second law of, uh, of physics, um, the force is a change in momentum, you find that you get those two components here. One is uh, parallel to the acceleration, so m times gamma a, but the second one is not. The second one is m naught times u times the change in time of the gamma factor, and that's not parallel to f or to a. And so you find that there's two, co the, the new vector, the new force of a particle is not parallel to the acceleration anymore. That's kind of counterintuitive. Counterintuitive. 